So we are now going to go through how to take history today. So we are going to do our usual. So we do history taking a physical examination in pediatrics. And also the physical examination will be more of a summary type. So we have to know how to do the actual physical examinations. So let's start with the introduction part on the history taking. So history taking is the first step in trying to answer the questions like what is wrong with the patient and there are steps which are involved in clinical thinking and one of them being that the history taking actually contributes 80 percent to the diagnosis and also provides subjective data so history taking 80 percent then physical examination 10 percent of the objective data and there is also the last part for investigations which also contributes 10 percent on the objective data as well then following by assess assessment which tries to make sense of the above data the ones you have found like when you taking physical examination assessment and the like then last part should be plan and treatment then demographics so this is your first step on uh, taking history so that's the first thing we start with so don't forget demographics so since this is pediatric history, history taking so it's not much different so make sure you know and always record the patient's name age sex and uh, ethnic group religion occupation address region of residency and also who is telling you the data who is the informant is this the parent is this the is this the cousin is the maid so whoever has brought the patient and whoever is giving you the where you are getting the collateral history from so that's where you 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 indicate if it's the patient they are old enough to speak for themselves so you have to indicate as well yeah so make sure you always record who the informant was and uh you have to record the date of the examination so you have to put the actual date and the time as well and also of course where you, you are taking that history from so let's say you indicate the date place and the time and also not forgetting your your name on top as well since you are the one who's taking the history then so you have to state whether the case is a, a self referral or a hospital referral so this is also important then observe the child when the child is coming in so to observe him uh, like a, a good clinician is the one who observed the uh, the patient when they are at play in the waiting room their appearance behavior and get as they come into the clinic room so before you even start with the start touching the patient i like the observation has already begun the moment the patient steps in the clinical room that's a good clinician what they do so so that's on demographics so we go to presenting complaints which which answers the question uh, which you ask to the you ask the patient or the one who has come with the patient so ask what's uh, brought your child in today so like you're asking you're trying to find out the reason why the child is seeking medical care uh, and after you do that you have to allow the parents or care, carers and child to recount the presenting complaint complaints or presenting symptoms in their own ways and at their pace and never interrupted by the medical officer into medical terminologies so the patient you are not supposed to interpret what the what the patient is saying into your own uh, medical terminologies or to use their own ways and if they were let's say to use uh terminologies which are like you know that's okay say let's say they use uh, phrases which are maybe a medical terminology themselves so i have to ask what they mean like uh 
do you know what the what that stem word means you get so you have to make sure the patient understands what they are saying if maybe you are you are doubting because the patient might use the medical terminology but maybe they just said it from somewhere and they are not fully understanding what it actually means so you have to also take note of onset order of onset and duration so on onset you have to ask when the when the same pain started so if if it's pain you have to indicate like if it's abdominal pain you indicate abdominal pain and also when it started if it's two days ago one day ago you have to indicate that as well so let's say on duration so duration of symptoms so before you go to duration of symptoms you have to make sure you also order the you have to order the symptoms the order you order the symptoms in a way that they were uh, occurring but if the patient doesn't remember how the, the symptoms were occurring you have to just uh, take note of the symptoms as they were the non duration of the symptoms so this is duration of the symptoms you you actually have to indicate the duration of the symptoms uh there is some there's some way of you writing the duration so after knowing the symptoms you have to write the duration now and now how so if the durations are in days you have to put over seven so if it's one day you put one over seven if it's two days you put two over seven so if abdominal pain for two days you have to put abdominal pain you will add the bullet then abdominal pain then you i've seen other people more like more trying to multiply and they like like abdominal pain then they multiply two over seven but if you want you can just say abdominal pain then maybe open some colon uh, like semicolonies or full full ones then you indicate uh abdominal pain and two out of seven so what, what, what if the duration is in is not in days if it's in weeks so if it's in weeks remember in the year we have about 52 weeks so if the patient presents in one week like they have abdominal pain of one week you have to indicate one over 52 so like uh, the example of abdominal pain so abdominal pain you open your colonies your semicolon then one one over 52 that's more like you are saying the pain started about one week ago that's the duration that's how that is the duration then the last part on duration is the month so what if they come with, like the pain started in two months i'll go into light so i have two months in a year so that's easy so just write two out of 12 that's two out of 12 that's how we, you write on duration so we are done with the presenting complaint so you have to now get in the history of presenting complaint like how do you how do you go about the history of presenting complaint so you have to explore the cause of the presenting complaint by you have to follow some some like you have to develop a systemic way of questioning uh, patients and how they have presented their their question they are presenting complaint or presenting symptom so you have to ask when did the current problem start what was it like as the problem changed so these are just some uh, questions that might help you uh, if so when and in what way as the medical as medical attention been sought and also and also what investigations have been performed or so far and what is the and what treatments have been tried have there been similar episodes in the past so does anything seem to take make the problem worse or better or do you have any photographic or video evidence in, in case of a seizure but these are just a uh, general thing so if the patient was to come with a uh, a problem you you yourself have to know what questions to ask so like example if if pain is a presenting complaint the SOCRES acronym can be used to explore it further and uh, focus on the affected uh, system. So SOCRES, I'm sure you know. So S for 
site or onset C character uh, R radiation A associated symptoms time course E exacerbating or relieving factors and also more like a severe score if it's but mostly I think now they have stopped using the severe score because patients sometimes they exaggerate the pain so that's for pain so it's now you to develop a systemic way of going through what the patient uh, the patient presents with so now we are done with the relevant uh, with the presenting complaint so just some few remarks on the presenting complaint so on the presenting complaint you have to make sure you, have, you so you have to make sure that the history of the presenting complaint if the patient, someone presents like i'm using the presenting complaint of abdominal pain so if someone presents abdominal pain and uh, you even if you are asking they even mention some some of the things which are in the system for git so make sure you exhaust the git uh, symptoms and uh, questions ask about other git symptoms so if it's that if they have diarrhea ask you ask them about the diarrhea and they like and they have nausea you see so we have to exhaust the presenting issue in the issue of presenting complaint you have to exhaust the system the patient has presented with then so that when we go to the relevant systemic review you are going just going to ask other systems so that's how how we do this so the list of presenting open should exhaust all the the paint what the patient has presented with and you ask other 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 symptoms on the same uh system the patient has presented with so that's how the is to presenting complaint should be ex exhausted or should be done so then now let's start with the systemic uh, review so this systemic inquiry runs from the head to toes and uh, these questions should be asked in order to find out any other associated symptoms of the disease so you also have to note that some questions can't be asked uh, to very young children as they can they can't talk and the mother cannot justify it justify if at all the child has experienced the symptoms for example dizziness so so like we said head to toe so we are going to start with the central nervous system so under the central nervous system there are symptoms you might ask that, but not all of them can be answered by the mother or the patient so just make sure you take note of those ones which they have answered so for example seizures ask if there is any uh, if the child has experienced any seizures dizziness also loss of consciousness so on loss of consciousness this is where you have again the way it is is if if one of the one of the symptoms of asking review of system or review of system is positive you don't have to just write positive or you don't have to write a cup a you write a price on top then you leave it like that you have to also begin to expand it so you have to open you open brackets or you do your your semicolon in. so you have to actually exhaust the symptoms so for example if seizures was present you are going to ask uh when the seizure started how was the movement of the body was there any was there any like the ectophase or was would the patient experience any any warning signs and the like so you have to know how to take the history of a seizure so even on loss of consciousness you also you have to know how to take someone history who has uh was lost consciousness so i have to ask was this sudden was there any warning was there any injuries how was the passage of urine when the parent had, had lost consciousness was there any urine incontinence how, how long was the duration of the same losing of consciousness and was there any after effect so did the patient uh, have any precipitating factors or was the down on capture or like the like so so if something is positive you also ask about it so don't just say positive they, then you leave it alone so the next thing is a uh, visual disturbance so like i said if it's positive again you have to ask uh, like visual disturbance how is the patient uh, seeing seeing things like is there any double vision or is there any dimness or and the like so that's uh more like you have to try to ask what kind of visual disturbance is there so speed 
uh, speech different disturbance. So again, so if there is positive, we ask about the we ask about uh, the onset, the duration, the nature, and also uh, since this is speech, so I have to ask this speech in reading or what kind of speech uh, disturbance is it when reading this when uh, talking to to people to some people or is this just everyone so that's speech disturbance then also have to ask about deafness or tinnitus or tinnitus which is then you also go to behavior so in behavior, you also ask about behavior and the like, and memory. So is there any memory layers? So again, here the child may might not know about memory. So yeah, then headache as well. So you have to ask if it's positive. There is a way of you taking it on headache. So you have to ask ask like it's sight. You go to only say the character of the headache. Because you have to exhaust if it's positive. Then you go to review of system. Again, on the so we are still on review of system, but we are now on uh, respiratory system. So ask about the chest pain. So again, chest pain, remember, you have to follow Socrates. Then cough, again, cough, if it's positive, you ask about the character, frequency, duration, causing pain, and uh, timing, productive or non productive. So we ask about dyspnea, we ask about the hoarseness, we ask about wheezing, uh, chorizo symptoms. So chorizo symptoms, so you make sure you ask about those. Epistasis, you also know how, you have to ask if there is any epistasis. And remember, if it's something positive, you have to exhaust it. You have to ask questions of that same symptoms. So is there any thought or any tonsillitis? So this is more like we are now examining the throat so any throat, infe any throat infection and the like yeah then cvs so again cvs also has chest pain so if you exhausted it in ris there's no need of you again doing it here so this thing as well then sweating of feet and ankles you ask about it palpitations so if the patient doesn't understand you ask the heart racing and the like so dizziness syncope so is there any loss of consciousness we ask and then git so is there any diarrhea so if it's positive again like i said remember you have to exhaust like on diarrhea you have to exhaust everything like uh how is the frequency uh how is the nature of the stool is it loose is it uh like you have to ask and and they like on diarrhea but there are a lot of questions but you can take uh, some time but yeah diarrhea is the most common printing complaint in uh, in pediatrics so make sure you read up read on it and uh, know what questions to ask then nature of stool you can also ask this in diarrhea of course then nausea vomiting you have to ask in abdominal pains and uh, abdominal discomfort for abdominal pain again you can use the same socket socrates then appetite, ask about the appetite, as the parents lost any weight. So, is there any tenesmus, any fraturance? So, so for tenesmus, this is just a painful sensation and they didn't need to defecate. So, you also have to ask about it. And there are, of course, fraturance, I'm sure you know. Then, dysphagia. So, you have to also ask about dysphagia. So, again, like I said, if it's a symptom is positive, so you have to now exhaust it. Like, is this dysphagia for solids? Is this dysphagia for for liquids? Is it uh under where where does the patient uh, experience the same dysphagia? Is it is that is it associated with uh, symptoms or has this progressed with uh from solid food to liquid? So you more like you exhaust the dysphagia as well. Then GUT. You have to ask symptoms on GUT. So this you have so on urine you have to ask on dysuria, the any changes in urination. You if applicable also ask ask about menstruation. So on urine you make sure you also ask ask about the color, amount, uh, the smell, and and also 
make sure you ask about any dribbling any incontinence so just make sure you exhaust when you win what patient you are going to ask so again if applicable is the patient you know that okay this patient has started the or if maybe if someone they have started administration so we have to ask about uh you also have to ask if they have reached that age or if they have uh, precautions but than the like maybe they might have started so make sure you, you ask about the age of onset of menac then you also ask about the periods like uh what was your last menstrual period uh are they regular or irregular how long does they last like uh, also sometimes you have to ask about if the the flow is it uh heavy is it uh, normal on the like so more like amount of loss so is there do you experience any intermenstrual bleeding like when you stop uh, menstruating then sometimes you have to you start experiencing them they also ask about other things like maybe like uh, for example I, I might give you for vaginal discharge so just in case maybe there is some discharge you, know, you also ask if it's positive you ask about the color quantity smell and also other symptoms which can cause a vaginal discharge you can even include them in the in this in this part for menstruation then we go to musculoskeletal system and of course remembering skin we also put skin here so we ask about the skin rash so skin rash we ask about the type duration and the end treatment was as the end treatment been given is it painful is there any is it itching so I ask about any joint swelling any joint stiffness then we are done with the past med, with the relevant uh, systemic review so let's go to relevant past medical history so this is why we ask about the patient's uh, medical history the past medical history so ask is there any history of similar illness in the past or operations accidents or injuries so after you ask these questions you ask about any hospital admissions in the past you also ask about any other illnesses in the past so if the patient sometimes patients don't usually go to the hospital so that's why you ask about any, any hospital admission in the past and also any other illnesses in the past then you also have to ask about uh, diabetes mellitus epilepsy asthma tb hiv status or sickle cell uh should be inquired appropriately as well but there is also a mnemonic death so though i don't like using it uh i've seen people like actually writing that now in past medical history like they write death and they put more positives or negatives but i think maybe the best way you can do is just uh more like abbreviate them like dm we write dm since it's already abbreviated ap you just maybe write ap but you, you, you are just bearing in mind for death rather than maybe writing the full death on the patient's file yeah because me, me that's being lazy otherwise but otherwise when you are learning it's a good way to start then maybe i'm sure as you go as you go ahead with the experience maybe you also begin to write write them in in your own short forms rather than writing death yeah so but it's a good mnemonic otherwise so ask also have to ask any history of uh, pediatric death and inquire about the cause and uh, and uh, also the age of more like the, of the same uh, pediatric death also have to inquire about any history of blood past blood transfusions then we are done with the past medical history then drug history and you have to ask are there any drugs being taken so we ask about the past the present medications including the name and the dosage any herbs being taken any allergies that depends on any allergies any side defects noted so and also another mnemonic for the next part so the mnemonic is bind b i n d so the next four sections we're going to be talking about so you have to bear this uh, mnemonic in mind bind so beth is to just face b so for basic history so basic history so you ask about first part is prenatal history you have to ask for any maternal obstetric problems uh any problems on delivery uh when was the delivery 
Was there prolonged rupture of membranes? Was there any maternal pyrexia? So how, how about the visit to antenatal care? How long? Uh, like how many bookings? Where was fancy the given? So on fancy the on fancy the you have to also know when to give it and the like. So if the patient comes in uh, comes in and they tell you maybe they they started fancy they never did fancy the so you have to know why why and the like. So septrin if so for septrin you don't have to uh, you don't have to inquire it so you don't have to ask it if fancy that was given so there's no need for you to inquire about septrin then also gestation age at birth and the length of gestation you also have to ask uh, so after you ask that's when you now know if the child is a preterm or term or a post term then you go to a perinatal history so you have to ask about your method of delivery was it spontaneous vertex delivery or or any other like forceps or it uh, cesarean i also ask about the birth history and the apgas cause also birth complications there are injuries and the like so make sure i ask this, these uh, questions then postnatal you have to ask in uh, the length of hospital stay and uh, method of, of feeding the child uh, underwent then i so we are now on i which is immunizations so you this is where now you have to check yourself on the under five and you also immunize but i've seen people ask like they ask if the child has had the immunizations but best way you can do is you you ask for the under five they have they have come with the under five then you get it you get the under five and you see if all the immunizations have, have been given then n is nutritionist to ask about the type of diet has been given the amount taken is there any change in feeding habits is there uh, so for breastfeeding i have to ask the duration and if maybe the child is not being breastfed anymore we have to ask about the age of weaning then development and developmental developmental and growth history so ask about the age at attainment of important milestones so age support sitting standing walking talking and self-care and smile so we ask about the at which age so for this for you to know for you to actually know when the child is supposed to start it's supposed to have to read on developmental milestones or and developmental and growth histories so developmental and growth they as in the actual topic you have to read so that you know when do the patients attend this so that you know if there is uh, any failure to thrive any dread milestones and the like so uh relations with uh, uh siblings you also have to ask uh, about uh, uh not only siblings so peers adults and the like school grade and performance behavioral symptoms or behavioral problems sorry so how's the behavior at school how's the behavior overall so we also have to look at the under five card for for the growth curve so the under five has as growth growth curve so you have to look at them for you to actually see how the child has been uh, moving then we are done with the binds and morning so this part just starts on its own so family history so we ask about the parents if they are alive and what they actually do and also other siblings and their actual ages and we also have asked the problems in the family remember the mnemonic death so gm epilepsy asthma tb your any history of hypertension in the family or sickle cell any sickles in the family and the like you have to have to you have to ask so death including miscarriages still birth and uh terminations you also have to ask in the family if they are if of course if there are any you have to ask then social economic history have to, like i said uh, on family history you ask some uh some questions but i've also seen other other people asking families to ask about the patient but social social economic history it's more it's more nice for you to ask uh, about the patient in social and economic history so uh, ask uh, about the patient of parents and the parental level of uh, education relationship of parents or caregiver water source and toilet and also if ask if there's any use of uh, I itn also ask about if they if the child is an adolescent so you can ask them if they smoke or take alcohol but if they don't if you are sure if they are if they maybe let's 
the proper example I can give is for if they are infants, so toddlers, you have to ask the parents themselves, like, do you take alcohol, smoke? Because that's going to affect the child as well. So, a, a history of recent travel abroad, you ask, ask about this. So, particularly in tropical areas, is important as the child may have a, a disorder in common in his or her own country, but having been contracted in another country where the disease may be endemic. For example, a malaria and the like. And also, uh, not, not only abroad, but you can also ask, for example, you can uh, just ask any, like, where we are now. So you can just ask if they end travel, end travel to other provinces or even out of another country. But, yeah. So there are some provinces which have uh, which are endemic for malaria. So, uh, so history of travel is uh, important to ask. Then you summarize your history. So this this is mostly in the words. So if you are taking history in the words, it's important for you to actually summarize history. But make sure you do it nicely. So you have to identify your important positives, like the things you asked and they were positives and and they were important as well so important negatives like maybe if you had the diagnosis in mind then you feel like maybe if this was positive or it threw out other other conditions if something is negative it becomes an important negative because if it is if it was positive it maybe would have uh, put the same the same differential diagnosis or same condition you had in mind on the on on the more like on the actual diagnosis so you have to notice the important positives and the important uh, negatives then for example uh this is a rough uh summary so you say in summary uh presenting baby of uh so this is a scab case so presenting baby of tamara uh born at 38 weeks gestation age he was born with an abga score of uh, Four out of ten with the difficulties in breathing and he did not cry immediately after birth. Then the view of system reviewed uh this was positive and the other and remark and, and others so which means other the other is other review of systems were unremarkable. On on drug history he was given a dentamycin, XP and amoxicillin. The baby the baby uh weight was the baby was born with a birth a birth weight of 2.8 uh, kgs with history of prolonged second stage of labor and the mode of delivery was c-section the immunization up to date so at, at that actual age so this is more like a rough example then impression from history then you also have to put your differentials from history so you have to list it in order from most likely to least likely in relation to the history and you do this when learning how to take history for the first time or when clicking on the words for the case presentations in the words or maybe if you have uh since i've seen now people are going for on online ones so if, if it's an online one make sure you do this as well because you learn a lot and you actually start on the on, on, also on the differentials you have to actually do a studying on them so like they might ask you why why did you think that what were your pointers and the like okay so we're done with the history taking now so for the physical examination you have to do a gender examination you obtain the child of course you can't just start touching the child so you have to obtain the child's cooperation so be sensitive when addressing a child and dressing a child and uh, make sure your hands are home so if the child appears very ill first assess the airway um, uh, breathing secretion and ability abcds so make sure you start more like a resuscitation start resuscitate the child if the child is very ill before you actually start to do this then you assess if the air temperature of the fibra or fibra the your para joints and uh, cyanosis so make this is a general examination so if the general examination sometimes you have to start with first say you start with the hand then you, you check for your finger clubbing your i like the palma pala and the like then you go maybe to your eyes you check for your jaundice and the like so but this is a general examination make sure you just you do it you, you check for everything 
then check for edema as well your lymphadenopathy the dehydration status or hydration status we have to know for for you to actually know this you have to study about the hydration so that you know okay these are the, the uh, hydration status i'm supposed to take note of yeah then you also have to check your cavity like i said general examination you're examining everything so check for any membrane regions any dental caries so you also have to check for the teeth and they like like i said dental caries you check for them then of course you have to also do your vitals so temperature you take temperature respiratory rate your blood pressure your pulse also regularity of your regularity regularity so more like and the point is on pulse you have to take note of the regularity of the pulse is there any delays or no? or not so radio 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 femoral so you have to take note of the delays if the if actor they are actually present then uh after after you do the general examination you go to anthropometric measurements so so anthropometric measurements first start with uh weight so on weight uh, you have so you have to take the patient's uh, weight so this is just some background uh uh on weight so you have to know that initially there is a weight loss of 12 percent loss when the child is born and they, they gain this weight by the 10th day then uh, gains uh 30 grams per kg uh 30 grams per day sorry then weight doubles by five months and trebles uh, trembles by by one year then also the height you have to take the child's height so you have to know that these are some some things you have to know like uh, the child should normally be 50 centimeters at birth and 75 centimeters at one year 100 centimeters at four years then gains five centimeters per year after that then you also have to do your age circumference you measure the age circumference and that's some background data so the at birth the normal one is uh 35 this is the more like the average but they should be arranged as well so the average is 35 uh, centimeters at birth then they actually they go to 40 centimeters at three months they do 47 centimeters at uh, one year and uh, after that they do 0 0.5 centimeters per year between the age of two to seven then after that it's 0 0.3 centimeters per year per year between the age of eight to twelve then you also have to do your mid up upper arm circumference using your shakia tape or other quality or more tape so you have to measure that on anthropometric measurements then systemic examination so on systemic examination uh this is the crucial part so for you to actually know this how to examine you have to actually do your you have to do your other readings on the on examination because this we are, we are, i'm just going to give a summary now to to do some of these examinations because we can't actually talk talk about how to do all the examinations systemic examination so on a special system of course you have certain inspection it's just for check for any deformities and they like scars tattoos surgical marks so on the patient check for any tenderness you make sure make sure you are just these are just pointers so you also check for centrality of the trachea you the chest movements you are take note if they are reduced or if they are normal so on, on percussion you also have to do your percussion so what you do on the right you do on the left and the back on the respiratory system then on scoutation again what you do on the on the front you do it on the back and what you do on the left side you do it on the right side so uh, your breath sounds you, the, are they bronchial vesicular so the normal ones here are vesicular so is there any queer entry and the like so are there any added sound how is the vocal resonance or is this vocal is there any vocal resonance then cvs again so you check for any distended uh, neck veins you assess the precordium apex bit so you also have to uh, assess so remember the auscultation sites for for cvs we have the aortic pulmonic and tricuspid and your metro so uh, upstream so aortic second uh, intercostal space on your right side 
almost near the mid scribe vicula but yeah so this is just more like the oscillation site so you have to take note of the oscillation site your aortic pulmonic tricuspid mitral and also i've also i've also seen where they put the abs points so i have to take note of that as well uh, on your own free time so uh, but i've seen most people are writing if it's normal or regular and the like but you have to actually identify what you add yeah so you also have to assess for any added sound so for you to actually know this you have to go through your your heart sounds your, your lung sounds you have to actually know them for to actually detect any abnormalities so what i'm saying is uh the, on this one we are just going through uh, we are assuming we've gone through the respiratory and cardiovascular and the other examinations we're going to talk about then this is just the summary on them because you have to know the sounds you have to know the mamas how to get them and the like which is which is work and uh you should be you should you should, you should done it you should, you should do it as well then the abdomen like we said inspection inspection is this is the abdomen moving with suspicion you palpate for you palpate you do for the liver or spring enlargement then abdominal mass palpable uh kidneys the renal angle tenderness you're shifting downness so this is just a summary of things you should take note of the bowel sounds and the like so these are some of the things make sure that you do the actual examinations then but for you to do the actual examination you have to know how to do them so yeah so your know, central nervous system again consciousness interacting with the environment or cooperative and if it's a child less than this uh, maybe five years or five years and below so these you can do you also your brand coma scale you grid if the child is appearing you say you want to assess them and the like or if they are old enough can do your gcs then if they are able to talk and answer questions you have to assess this your cranial nerve intact you have to assess the cranial nerves but the, i'm sure as you know this is the longest uh, examination so how is the gate so this is for the cns this is the longest examination so you also have to go through this this is just a summary on the things you can talk of because you also have to notice the reflexes and the like a lot of things so on mss but the reflexes are very important in here because this is pediatrics we're talking about and if they are infants make sure you do a reflexes or if they're needed to do a reflexes very properly then mss of course you have to check for any edema and also you have to grade it as well also if there's any dermatosis you also uh, check for grade it as well then last part is you have to summarize the physical examination so important positive important negatives then you conclude so conclusion includes your final impression so this is for like i said doing doing on the words so after I do this but your final impression should uh should should combine everything from history taking to to examination as in after you examine the child what do you now think is wrong so your differentials as well then you do your plan so so a plan involves just investigations treatments and the management yeah so but sometimes you might find if there is something else maybe the investigations are, are, are some people put investigations uh, they don't put them on plan so they just maybe say investigations then management alone yeah but you you have to know how to actually do this so this is just one of them it's not a it's not this is not cast in stone so yeah but otherwise this is the rough rough examination and the things you're supposed to to do on uh pediatric is the taking so make sure you act you know the patient because these these uh, are not cast in stone so they depend on the child you are dealing with and how aged they are like how old they are like what's the age if they are very young there are things you are other things maybe you have not we have not talked about you're supposed to take note of then we are done otherwise thank you for for attending uh make sure you also like this video and uh 
you share with your friends because this taking is the most important part and you have to know it uh, properly for you to actually know the diagnosis and the like so thank you share this video and uh, like this page and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell notification see you next time